the evening went much better than she expected. Eva Terry and her beau enjoyed a gourmet dinner in South Beach, Miami. It wasn't so much the dinner as it was the company she shared. Braxton Peringren admired Eva, even lusted for her. She was a middle-aged woman who managed the family perfume business for which he worked. Braxton, 24, had just joined the firm as an entry-level accountant. This year, Eva singled Braxton out from the herd of new workers, as she often did when looking for a new playmate. She was tired of her husband, although they had been married for just over two years. He kept to himself as CFO of the family business. According to Eva, he was boring but stable. It was good for tinkering once or twice every few weeks, but not much more than maintenance, according to Eva. Eva's husband Martin was tall, 6 feet 2 inches, and fit. He was in good shape from his daily swim, but according to Eva, nothing special. She never criticized his good looks and was, in fact, proud to be his wife in private with her friends and close associates. But he lacked the frontman persona for any public appearance needed to sell the brand. He had no style or talent. He was much better behind the scenes. That's probably why she married him. She needed financial management and the love and support of a good person to succeed. It wasn't that she didn't love him, but she needed a younger man to fully satisfy her sexually. Eva was the penultimate representative of Sachet Fragrances, constantly the center of attention in television commercials and magazine publications. Even at age 45, she occupied a wide niche in both business and personal life. She had a model look with her brown hair, perfectly applied makeup and stylish clothes. She looked like a younger version of Andy McDowell, her afternoon dates leading up to her wedding to Martin were carefully kept under wraps. Braxton was her new attempt at a new lover. It was their first date and her first affair in marriage. Braxton was, of course, vetted by her personal security team. They carried out extensive testing to root out any of his personal secrets, just as she had done with all the other young men in her life. Until now, except for one failed long-term relationship in college, he seemed squeaky clean. Perhaps he could be bribed if it came to that, but overall, he was unblemished. How refreshing Eve thought as she read the report. However, Eve intended to investigate Braxton for more than just the report. For an accountant, he was extremely charming. He was respectful of her when she happened to walk into the accounting office one afternoon to check on something with Martin, which was what attracted her in the first place. He was very handsome, broad-shouldered, in a good suit. He was upbeat and fashionable, unlike her husband Martin, who seemed to be wearing suits made in the 80s. Martin married Eva because he was in love with her. Of course, it didn't hurt him because he considered her the most beautiful and intelligent woman in the world. She was a very powerful CEO in the competitive perfume industry. She seemed to be as deeply in love with him as he was with her. They dated for almost a year before he bent the knee and proposed to her. She immediately replied, Yes. Martin had no intention of working for her, but when they got engaged, he felt it was the right time to dive deeper into the business. The business was trying to convert some of its long-term debt into private equity. Martin proved to be an invaluable asset, completing the transaction without any problems. He was very proud when Eva named him CFO of Sachet Fragrances and gave him the honor of being called her husband. Of course, he knew about her affairs with young men before their engagement. They even discussed this for a long time before their engagement and subsequent marriage. Ava assured him that all such connections had ceased. After all, she had not been married before, so her past affairs were no one's business. Deep down, Martin suspected that she might continue her affairs with younger men, but he hoped that this would not happen. Despite his misgivings, he continued their marriage. He was willing to trust Eve and not pay attention to her past behavior. But he also prepared for the future if Eva's promiscuous feelings returned. He made it clear to Eve that fidelity to the marriage was paramount to its continuation. He was 39 and she was 43 when they got married. During the first year of marriage, they recreated your honeymoon with long sexual marathons almost every weekend. 
Both Martin and Eva never seemed to want anything more. Martin, of course, suspected his lovely wife of continuing her spontaneous dates, but he never admitted these feelings to anyone and did not confess to Eve. Of course, he could never prove or disprove their existence. In reality, it was just a feeling based on Eve's past behavior. At the start of their second year, Eva showed signs that her heated romance with Martin was cooling. Martin again mentally doubted her fidelity, but of course, he could not prove anything. Eva, as CEO, held everything, had access to everything, including unlimited access to all systems, both personal and private. There couldn't be any secrets that she didn't know or couldn't know if she wanted to. The house they lived in was quite large for the two of them, over 5,000 square feet. If it were up to Martin, they would save the money they spent on the house, along with cleaning and upkeep, and put it in their pocket for a 401k or other deferred investments. He would be happy in a condominium. He didn't need such a house for just the two of them, with such a grandiose surrounding, replete with a cook, a maid, and a butler. However, he enjoyed going to their pool every day. It was an indoor-outdoor pool that opened out through a clear glass partition in the grounds of their immaculately manicured Miami home. The pool located inside the house was modern and immaculate. The outside pool was a luxurious plunge pool with a built-in hot tub heated by solar panels. The pool was extravagant, but Martin thought it was worth it. He carefully maintained it every week with testing and chemical additions as needed. No pool maintenance or cleaner was needed to maintain the pool. He paid special attention to the pH of the pool so that the water didn't turn green like the high school and college pools he remembered. It was the start of the new fragrance year, which began in June this year, that attracted media attention. The company just released a new fragrance ahead of the fourth quarter holiday season shopping spree that has captured everyone's attention. The scent has become the hit of the season. Several celebrities picked up the line and began promoting it throughout the summer months. When commercials and print ads featuring Eva as a model were aired in late September, the product took off like a rocket. It was probably this rocket effect that caused the wheels to fall off the proverbial marriage wagon. Eva had never been home, but she felt at home everywhere, in her element. She constantly promoted the product line. There were weeks when Martin did not see her. He reasoned at the time that it was just business, but he still believed that Eve was unwavering in her commitment to monogamy. He could never say exactly who or when, but he strongly suspected something. She was too beautiful a woman not to attract male attention. He kept an eye on the financial aspects of the business and knew the sales frequency enough to know when a new hit was on their hands, but decided he needed to take some action regarding his personal life. He could not decide which course he should take. When Ava finally returned after Thanksgiving from her 30-day roadshow, as she called it, she was completely exhausted. She slept in their bedroom for almost 36 hours. Attentive to her needs, Martin showered her with love and affection. It seemed almost unreal to him. His wife, with whom he lived for just over two years, was a mystery to him. Beautiful but terribly needy during periods of depression. She demanded attention, but at the same time enjoyed the care Martin gave her in the comfort of their own home. As he cared for his wife, his sense of deception lessened a little. Martin knew her hectic travel schedule was coming to an end as the holiday season drew to a close. He was looking forward to the Christmas holidays with his wife to rekindle the embers of passion that had died down since the beginning of the summer. Of course, Martin kept in touch with his wife while she toured the U.S. and Europe promoting the new line, but he was constantly tormented by doubts about her fidelity. While she was away on business trips, Martin installed micro cameras throughout the house. Their location was even a secret to him until he looked at their channels one evening before Eve returned. Even then, with cameras capable of tracking, zooming, and focusing, it was almost impossible to determine their exact location. Thank you. I appreciate you watching this video. After all, it means that my efforts are not in vain. 
Please subscribe to the Box of Incredible Stories channel so that you don't miss new interesting videos that will be uploaded to the channel. New videos are uploaded for you every day. Thank you if you are already a subscriber. Now keep watching and listening to this fascinating story. One evening after setting up the cameras, he actually saw himself walking through the front door and was able to see that his fly was actually halfway unzipped. Although he was embarrassed, he thought that cameras would undoubtedly have captured any affairs in their home. The video quality was amazing, but the sound quality was even better. Together, they obviously created a first-class security system. Martin had long suspected that Ava had affairs while traveling, but could not rule out that they took place in their home. This timid step of monitoring the house was Martin's first attempt to find out about her affairs or get more information about whether they were happening elsewhere. Their schedule was such that they rarely had lunch or saw each other after work, so Eve could easily sneak home for lunch with anyone. Each room in their home was connected to its own three-camera system, with a battery backup in case the power went out. The video stream was sent over the internet to a central computer in the cloud. Each camera had its own memory card capable of storing 24 hours of video and audio. All of them were wirelessly synchronized with a main computer in the cloud, to which only Martin had the password. Special software made it possible to view images from each room on split screens or to click and zoom on any specific feed. She was elegant, but simple. It was just Martin's cautious way of planning ahead for everything that might happen. A video of a CEO caught in flagrante delicto with his lover would make tabloid magazine editors drool if they knew of its existence. Martin hoped that one threat would be enough for Eve to understand what this could lead to. After the holidays, when Ava was absent from dinner several times, Martin began to feel uneasy again. He was glad he had cameras. They enjoyed an amazing Christmas, with gifts galore and a love life that felt like they were back on their honeymoon. When they returned to work after the holidays, Martin's senses picked up on the change with Eva, but the cameras and audio showed nothing but love and affection as Martin reviewed the files daily. Eva asked him to visit the factory in China at the end of January to ensure that their documentation and quality control met the company's standards. Martin suspected a trick in her request, but bit his tongue and agreed. The trip was supposed to take about two weeks, of course long enough for Eve to engage in lovemaking. This time, however, he thought, I have cameras. After Martin left for the East at the end of January, Eva had her own plans. She planned to invite Braxton to dinner again tonight, but at her home rather than at one of the fancy South Beach restaurants. She didn't believe she really needed to seduce Braxton since he had given her all the right signals at their last dinner. She liked it when lovers came to her. This gave her a sense of control and power over the situation. Braxton knew he wanted Eve and was determined to have her. Her husband, his boss, was an inferior being as far as he could tell. He certainly wasn't physically intimidating, and he obviously couldn't satisfy an older woman's lust. He thought that he himself was the best man to make her scream like a little girl. His dignity was greater than most, and the way he wielded it never left a woman wanting more when he finished. He saw this as not only his ticket to sexual nirvana, but also his ticket to the boss's chair if he played his cards right. Once he satisfies the more mature Eva, he can get a ticket to the CFO's office with her blessing. Eve called Braxton into her office mid-afternoon after Martin had left early. Braxton wasted no time, and within minutes he was waiting in the waiting room until Eve's assistant allowed him to enter. Eve liked her men to act quickly and carry out orders in her time and at her choice. Braxton, thank you for your promptness. I'll get straight to the point. Would you like to join me for dinner at my house tonight? I would like to see the sales figures for our new fragrance for the last quarter. Please arrive on time at 7 and bring your sales charts. My plea sure. And yes, I will definitely bring all the sales figures. From what I've seen, you've handled the promotion very well. Well done, Mrs. Terry. Thank you, Braxton. Please call me Eve when we're alone, as we will be tonight, while we eat dinner and review the numbers. 
please take the address from my assistant when you leave. Braxton was surprised. He was a little dismayed that there was no more flirting, especially since their last date went so well. Perhaps she needed to keep an eye on the office environment to avoid the possibility of being discovered when someone dipped a quill into her inkwell. Regardless, Braxton knew what would happen that evening. She wanted him. He sensed it when she licked her lips several times as she spoke. She casually twirled a small lock of hair from the bottom of her neck in her fingers, as if it were bait. She looked like a tigress, twirling her tongue while looking at an elk. It was just Eve's way of being very careful not to draw attention to herself. Ava had an entire security service attached to her, monitoring her every move. They did this electronically and physically. Martin didn't know that she checked the house monthly for electronic devices, but he was well aware of her physical safety. Her security team discovered the intricately arranged cameras shortly after Martin installed them. In Eve's opinion, exposing them was a waste of time. Instead, upon learning of them, she asked if they could be temporarily defeated, as she did not want Martin to know that they had been discovered. This, she thought, worked to her advantage, controlling the information. She could use his own observation to prove her virtue. Martin will never suspect anything. Its chief security officer advised against disabling them, as it could cause more concern when something is discovered. However, he presented a device that essentially jammed the camera's wireless transmissions, resulting in the Snow White picture he mentioned. She wondered to herself what Martin might actually have said. Honey, I know you're cheating on me, but my cameras must be faulty, so I have no proof. Eva laughed out loud. Her laugh was evil. She ordered a muffler to be installed. Returning home at 4.30, Eva relaxed in the master bathroom with a glass of Chardonnay. She allowed the relaxing impulses of the jets, warm water and bubbles to lead her into a sense of euphoric bliss. At 5.30, she came out and put on her robe. Eva completely relaxed. She had already instructed the chef to prepare dinner and wanted to make sure everything went according to plan. Besides, she needed to replenish her wine supply. She could have called the butler, but she preferred to do it herself. Martha, I hope everything is ready for dinner today, Ava asked, entering the kitchen. She saw a table set for two in the adjacent dining room with candles, as she had requested. The furnishings of the room were thought out perfectly. They'll have lobster bisque to start, crispy blue cheese salad, and baked chilean sea bass with almond beans for the main course. This was one of Eva's favorite dishes. The fish had limoni, a rosemary aftertaste that paired perfectly with the wine she chose. Martha outlined to her everything that was in the kitchen. All the food was prepared. Eve simply had to turn on the ovens and burners at the appropriate times. Dinner will be sumptuous. Eve was sure Braxton would be willing to help her set a few plates on the table as they sipped wine while dinner was prepared. Eve was in a devilish mood tonight. It was all so decadent, she thought. The thrill of illicit sex that she had control over turned her on. Around 6.15, she decided to go back to the bedroom to get dressed for the evening. She clicked the remote control, which made a small beeping noise, indicating that all of Martin's cameras in the house were turned off. To any curious eye or camera, they would have seen snow. She had dinner with a new client on her calendar. Now that the cameras were off, another scene was about to play out. Sipping wine and looking at her closet, she decided what to wear. It was too stuffy in a business suit. The short skirt was too slutty and didn't suit a woman her size. But her new red dress with heels and pearls would have been perfect. She bought this dress in Paris during a promotional tour. It was one of a kind. She was glad she was in the right place at the right time to buy it. She then picked out some lingerie and decided to treat Braxton to some old-fashioned sexiness. She chose a matching garter, panties, and bra made of red and black lace that pushed her still firm breasts forward. She pulled black nylon stockings over her perfectly smooth legs. What would Martin think if he saw her like this? Perhaps Martin would have accepted the challenge. But she put those thoughts out of her mind. Only the young could quench her thirst. She was sure that Braxton was a lion ready to mate, and she expected him to take her several times in her own marital bed. 
She never thought about the consequences of her decision to take a lover as a married woman. She felt almost no guilt. She felt entitled. She finished dressing just as the doorbell rang shortly before seven. Her boy was punctual. It ignited her ego and libido, knowing she had control over it. She casually walked downstairs. The cook and butler had long since left, as per her orders. Braxton looked amazing in his light blue three-button shirt, paired with a nice dark blazer and navy trousers. His boots shined as if he had just polished them. His black hair looked neatly trimmed. His steel-gray eyes were intense as she opened the door. Eve had to pinch herself, thinking that today he was all hers. But dinner and sales numbers should come first. She invited him in. He brought a bottle of wine and flowers, which really warmed her up. She was not used to such an intimate gesture. No one except Martin, her loving husband, even thought of bringing her flowers. It touched her. None of her romances before her marriage had any elements of romance, which she admitted was exciting. She offered him a drink, which he kindly declined in favor of sparkling water. She poured herself another generous helping of Chardonnay, which was to be the wine of the evening. She began heating the soup and checked Martha's instructions one last time to make sure everything was in order. Martin had landed in Tokyo, Japan, and was awaiting his relatively short flight to Beijing, China, when his phone alerted him. He arrived at the gate for his last flight to China and decided to sit with a drink and take a closer look. The alarm came from the cameras. While he was looking at the details, the cameras reported a malfunction. He tried to access the main server and found that the camera feed to him was disabled. Puzzled, he brought up an additional screen on the cameras. According to the app, they had energy, but the only signal they transmitted was white snow. Frustrated, Martin pressed every button on the app, trying to find the cause of the problem. He even went to Advanced, having never tried it before. In a rage, he hit the button several times, but to no avail, almost breaking the phone in the process. At the most inopportune moment, the cameras could not be analyzed. He abandoned the app and resigned himself to personally speaking with the security representative who sold the equipment as bulletproof and demanding a full refund. Ava and Braxton enjoyed soup, salad, and appetizers while reviewing sales numbers over a nice dinner. At dinner, Braxton had a glass of wine, but nothing else. Eve wondered if he really didn't like drinking alcohol. Doesn't matter, she thought. If he could play half as well in bed as he can at dinner, he'd be worth it. During dinner, she took off one of her high heels and casually ran her stockinged foot over Braxton's ankle. Her seduction was blatant, but she felt strongly that Braxton had read him accordingly. He looked a little scared at first, then smiled and pointed to the bottom line of profit for the new scent. She smiled back. It was like a game of cat and mouse. She was a cat. Braxton, are you interested in... older women? She asked, putting her high heels back on. Only if the older woman is you, Eva, he answered casually. Well, since we are looking for a common interest, maybe it's better for us to retire to my bedroom. I mean, I'm starting to get a little tired. It's been a long day, and I'd like to see the sales forecasts for the first quarter. What about your husband? He asked quickly. Martin? She looked at her watch. He should board his flight to Beijing soon. She said easily, Lead me, my love. Braxton took her hand. When they reached the master bedroom, Braxton stood in awe. All one-of-a-kind designer flares of fabrics, paintings, furniture and gear to satisfy the CEO. Eve sat in a high-winged chair in the small living room, away from the bed. She crossed her legs and shook one of her high heels. Please help me take off my heels, Braxton. She said this in a playful tone, but Braxton took it as an order to kneel at her feet. He was willing to play along until the time came. He took off his jacket and placed it on another chair opposite her. He kicked off his shoes and eagerly bent down to serve the princess as she asked. He swore that this temptress would submit to his will before the end of the night. Ava kicked off her shoes and turned around. Braxton easily unzipped her back, revealing her creamy shoulders and back. When Eva's dress slipped into the puddle at her feet, she turned around sharply. Braxton took her into his strong embrace and kissed her deeply, thrusting his tongue deep into her mouth. She responded in kind, 
and he received the first of many electric jolts as Eve shuddered, enjoying the taste of her young lover. As they continued to kiss passionately, Eve unbuckled Braxton's belt and pants. She broke their kiss and carefully pulled them and his boxers down to his feet. Her thighs began to tingle at the sight of his manhood. Braxton, left in only his shirt, stood before Eve's admiring eyes. She tore his shirt, scattering buttons everywhere, revealing his tight abs and well-developed chest. Eve jumped back when a pair of buttons hit her. Braxton picked her up and threw her on the bed. Eve couldn't help but gasp as Braxton jumped onto the bed next to her. They hugged each other. Braxton's muscular arms wrapped around her. She felt wanted. She felt the need for her partner as his hot groin poked mercilessly into her stomach as they kissed. Braxton burned with lust as he unclasped Eve's bra, carelessly tossing it to the floor. His gaze became even sharper and more piercing. Eve giggled. He immediately plunged into her cleavage, causing Eve to tremble and get goosebumps. I need you, Braxton, now. Please. She was breathing heavily in frustration. As you wish, he answered. Ava was more than ready. If she had looked at him, she would have seen how shiny teeth, like a wolf's, were smiling back at her. Braxton's smile was content. Now it was his turn. Braxton was almost more than she could handle. Almost. She vowed never to underestimate him again. He would be a great choice for something more than just a casual midweek meeting. Perhaps, she thought, he could be the long-term lover she really needed. The thought of a long-term lover made her blush and tremble with fear. She was tormented by guilt. This was her first novel after marriage. She was no longer a lonely socialite with no worries and no husband. Now she truly believed that she knew what it was like to be married. It was strange, she thought, that her infidelity to her husband was her most important thought. Eve almost screamed at Braxton to leave. He would never understand if she shared her feelings of betrayal with him. While Braxton gathered his clothes, Eve whimpered quietly in bed. What did she do? She not only desecrated herself but also her marriage. Martin was her first marriage by choice. She could never find that perfect mixture of man, intelligence, and charm. At least with Martin she found a man, and brains. He didn't have much charm, but perhaps she thought she could work on his charm. Maybe he's not so bad after all. He had two out of three. And he really loves her, she thought. Who else would put up with this damn bitch after she came home from a month's promotion? Who else could help her like that in the office and at the same time restore her sanity after a long trip? Braxton took her hint. Without saying anything, he left her bedroom. She saw his contented smirk and smile as he closed the door. She knew he would return. He knew that he would return too. He left the socks under the bed, wondering if the housekeeper would find them and throw them in with her husband's underwear. Martin just got off the plane in China. He was still very nervous. His expensive cameras couldn't seem to get the job done. He was interested in what was happening at home. He wanted to call Eve, but rejected the thought. It was already past midnight in Miami. What does he learn from her? Nothing. Will she say, I had a great evening with my young lover? He doubted she would be that stupid. On the way to the hotel, Martin now believed that Ava, or rather her security team, had discovered the cameras. Somehow they were disabled. But for what purpose? He could only think of one possibility, and it scared him. If Eve cheated on him, it would end the partnership he had so carefully maintained with her. Trust, honesty, and loyalty were the qualities that he considered most important in any relationship. His conversation with Eva before his marriage made these moments crystal clear. However, without absolute proof, Martin had nothing but doubts and suspicions. Next time, there will be no doubts. Martin's visit to China was boring and disappointing. He checked the numbers, the assembly line, and watched the quality control inspectors. He knew the numbers were accurate. He faked his understanding of aromas and the assembly line well, nodding when spoken to and asking a question or two that he got from Eve to make sure they weren't completely fooling him. But his Chinese masters knew that Martin had no idea how to make fragrances. He left two weeks later. Only Ava knew about his arrival. 
He suspected that she would not meet him upon arrival, so he was very surprised to see her. As he passed through customs and headed to the baggage claim area, he noticed that she was running towards him in a very beautiful red dress, which he had not seen before. She was dressed as if she was returning from a promotional tour, pearls, a scarf, and incredibly high heels. She greeted him enthusiastically. Marty, I'm so glad you're home. I've missed you so much. She wrapped her arms around his neck and wrapped her body around him, planting a deep kiss on his lips. Martin, for his part, was shocked but happy to be back home. He brought back her passion in kind. Now he wondered if it was guilt on her part. He pulled away, gasping for breath. I missed you too. To what do I owe such an ardent greeting? He asked curiously. I just missed you. Can't a wife miss her husband? She said, pouting her lips. Certainly. And I missed you too. Go home. Martha prepared dinner for us. I just want you to be with me today. Eve's eyes betrayed her when she spoke. Martin could clearly see the guilt dancing within them. The cameras may have let him down, but her eyes told the truth. Sounds great. What's for dessert? He asked, raising his eyebrows. Eva grinned with playful eyes. I'll have dessert. Eva and Martin spent the rest of the weekend in bed, eating, making love and showering together. It was again, just like on their honeymoon. Monday came and they took a shower together to get ready for a new day at the office. During her weekend with Martin, Eve felt something she had never felt with Braxton. Love. When Martin hugged her, she felt wanted and protected. Their bond over the weekend only confirmed to her the depth of devotion and care that Martin felt for her. It was also a clear indication of how Braxton had used her as a cheap rental mule the previous weekend. Perhaps it was this duality that pointed to her shortcomings. She quickly brushed him off, not wanting to ruin her glow from a fabulous weekend with her husband. Martin drove to work in his Ferrari. Ava hated this car. It was awkward, loud, and too fast for her liking. Martin usually drove a Tesla, but decided he hadn't driven a Ferrari until he was gone for two weeks and needed to stretch his legs to blow the carbon out of the cylinders. Eva called a taxi to go to work. She hated driving in Martin's Ferrari. Everything is for the best, she thought. She wanted to work on her email, which she had ignored over the weekend while showering Martin with love and affection. Her plan seemed to work perfectly. She found nothing from Martin that indicated he had any suspicions that Braxton had come to their home and spent the night several times the previous weekend before Martin arrived. Martin was also glad that Eva decided not to go with him. He was confused as to why the camera suddenly started working the day after he tried to watch them. He was meticulous and wanted the security company he contracted with to find out what really happened. He called on the way to work. He gave the security company a key for their initial setup so access wasn't an issue. On Monday, all the servants were free, so no additional details were expected. By late morning, he was informed that the cameras were functioning to specification. But the specialist said that today, when they examined the house, there was something unusual. There was another electronic device with repeaters installed that was not there when they did their initial installation. They weren't sure what the devices were, but speculated that it might be some kind of jamming device that was interfering with the cameras. Martin immediately put two and two together, concluding that Eva's security had discovered the cameras and somehow defeated them. Martin's heart sank. He understood that Eve must know about the cameras. Now he was sure that Eva was cheating on him in their own home. There could be no other explanation. If she had approached him and asked why the cameras were installed, he would have simply said for their personal safety, but she didn't. She knew they were there and deliberately defeated them. After lunch, he will begin to take some preliminary steps to protect himself financially. Eva asked her personal assistant to have Braxton meet her at her office at 10. Gina has been with her for the last 10 years. Always loyal, she earned more than most in the company. Her devotion was bought and paid for by Eve over the years. But Gina already knew what was going on from the moment Braxton was called into Eve's office. She loved Eva, even dreamed of one day becoming just like her. But what she did to her husband was simply wrong. He had no idea that Eve was having fun with people like Braxton, 
just like she had with others before she got married. While Gina hoped Martin wasn't completely clueless, she would have liked to have been able to warn him about his wife's extracurricular activities. He was always kind to her, never talked down to her. In fact, he treated everyone the way she thought he would. He was friendly, outgoing, and genuinely cared about people and the company. She understood why Eve was so drawn to him. Martin was very fit, clean-shaven with bright blue eyes. Although he was a little older than her 35 years, she still considered him quite young. She even shivered slightly when he came to Eva. His clothes were not his best attribute, as she was sure Eve had pointed out to him. But Gina believed that there is always more to a person than clothes. People sewed clothes, not the other way around. At 9.55, Braxton sat next to Gina, ready to meet Eve. It was unusual, she thought, that Eve didn't ask him to bring documents to make their meeting look more realistic. Was it just called sex? Surely Eve wouldn't just have fun with Braxton in her office? Gina could be listening under the door, which would likely be closed upon Braxton's arrival. She could also turn on the intercom and pick up the phone as if she were talking. It would be risky if Eve saw that the intercom light was still on. Ava called her on the intercom. Gina responded immediately and motioned for Braxton to come inside. He opened, entered, and closed the door. She continued to talk on the phone as the door closed and pressed the intercom button a second time. She knew she was taking a risk, but most of all she wanted to make sure that something was going on between Braxton and Eve. Braxton, I'm afraid we'll have to break up. Martin is back from China, and I don't want to take any more risks with you. Braxton shifted in his chair. And if I do not want to? What if I want to continue having sex with the CEO of the company? He said it loudly, almost loud enough for anyone outside Eve's office to hear. Braxton, poor thing, I hope you're just being naughty and not threatening me. If that were the case, nothing would have worked out for you. Eve lowered her voice, hoping Braxton would do it too. Really? What if I told your husband, my boss, about last weekend? Wow. I didn't think that you thought so little about me and my feelings. I think then you will win. Would you like to do this here in my office? How about right here on my desk? Eve waved her hands across the table. Somewhat dazed, but very excited, Braxton began nodding his head. You stupid fool. You will never see me again, especially in my own office. Who do you think you are? Please go and tell Martin whatever you want. It's your word against mine, and I can tell you who Martin will believe. Ev said this with determination but she felt a trembling from her own words. Well, then, I guess we'll just see. Braxton hissed, standing up and heading towards the door. Eve, never one to back down from a confrontation, said conspiratorially. Braxton, before you go, think that our entire affair was written down. A little Photoshop magic and it will look like you forced me, practically raped me, especially during that time, first night. Of course, you remember how I screamed at you to stop. How will that look on your resume? You're a bitch, Braxton shouted to her from across the room. This is true, and I will be her. But we're done, and so are you. I would advise you to look for a job and leave the company peacefully if you don't want to take risks. Eve turned her attention to the papers on her desk as she released Braxton. Gina hung up the phone quietly, listening to everything that was said. Braxton slammed Eve's office door, startling Gina, who immediately dialed Eve's number. Eva, is everything okay? Maybe call security? No, Gina, it's okay. Just a slight misunderstanding about the direction the company is heading. Nothing to worry about. But thanks for your concern. Braxton Peregrine was... disappointed with the result of the negotiations. If you're sure everything is okay, can I get you something? Maybe a cup of tea? Actually, that would be great. Thank you, Gina. You are the best. Gina went to make tea for Ev. She confirmed everything she thought was happening. She also knew that Braxton was history. Should she break her trust in Ava and warn Martin? She was torn between loyalty to her boss, decency towards her husband, and doing the right thing. 
Braxton stormed out of here as if he'd been scalded, Gina said, putting her tea on a stand in Eve's office. Just a little misunderstanding, like I said. There's nothing to worry about. Unfortunately, the time has come. I think Mr. Peregrine will most likely look for work elsewhere. Wow, I had no idea, Eva, that you knew every detail of what was going on downstairs, even in the finance department. I'm impressed. But why didn't Martin cope? Eve started to get a little annoyed with Gina and her questions. It was her company and everyone worked for her. And while she doesn't owe her an explanation, it might be better to try to calm Gina down rather than shut her out in this situation. Well, sometimes, when suggestions are given and not taken into account, it is better to immediately nip them in the bud, which is what I did. I saw how the situation was developing and decided to act. Are you saying that Martin told him what to do and he didn't do it? Eva slowly sipped her tea. Gina, thanks for the tea. I need to review some photo shoots. Please send Michelle promptly at 11. Thank you. Gina was rejected, as was Eve's typical approach, when the discussion ended. Gina didn't like it. She left Eve's office gracefully, but burning from the inside. How dare this woman treat such a good man like Martin like this? It was simply unfair. Returning to her desk, Gina called Martin. Hi, Martin. This is Gina, she said in a whisper, although no one could hear her. Could you meet me for lunch at 12.30? I need to talk to you. This is extremely important. Oh, of course, Gina. How about Tres Amigos on the 3rd? 12.30. Yes, thank you, Martin. I apologize for such a short notice, but we need to talk. Don't worry, Gina. I'll see you at 12.30. Martin was already sitting at a table in the back of the room. He motioned for Gina as she walked through the door. The waitress appeared as soon as Gina took her seat. They both quickly ordered from the short lunch menu and easily decided to split the chicken fajita for two. Martin became curious. As soon as the waitress left, he asked, Gina, tell me what was important that we needed to discuss at dinner. Gina took a sip of her iced tea and looked at Martin. He was handsome, but he's also married, Gina reminded herself. But maybe after she tells him everything she knows, he'll file for divorce. You'll probably think worse of me when I tell you everything, but I think too highly of you not to tell you. Now Martin was surprised and wary. Gina, you have always been faithful to Eve, even longer than me. I have always believed that you put the interests of the company at the center of your attention. I could never think less of you than the professional that you are. This calmed Gina a little. She focused and began her summary of her morning meeting with Braxton Peregrin. Martin, I think Ava is having an affair with Braxton Peregrin. This morning I overheard a conversation between them where it sounded like Eve had broken up with him. She said that since you returned from China, she couldn't risk you finding out. Martin was stunned. His worst thoughts and fears were now confirmed. He took a long sip of his iced tea, saying nothing looking absent-mindedly at the table. Gina was amazed that he didn't show more emotion, and then one thought came to her mind. Maybe he already knew. Before Martin could answer, a plate appeared on their table. He was grateful for the interruption. The waitress left. The only sound violating silence, there was a sizzling chicken fajita for two in a cast-iron skillet on the table between them. Martin looked Gina straight in the eye when he spoke, Thank you, Gina. Martin, what happened to you? Why are you thanking me? I just told you that your wife is having an affair. This is not at all what I expected to hear. Why are you not angry? Are you not ready to kill the messenger? Or your wife? Or even Braxton? Gina's voice rose with each question. Gina, how long have you been working for Seychelles Fragrances? Martin asked, confused. My 10th birthday was recently in December. Why do you ask? Gina answered excitedly, but lowered her voice slightly, imitating Martin. Bear with me here. I think everything will become clear soon. How long have you been working for Eva? Ten years. I've always worked for Eva. Why are you asking this? I just told you that your wife is having an affair, and you're asking me how long I've been working here. I don't understand. 
In all these years that you've been working for Eve, has she ever had young men come and go at her whim? Yes, Gina replied, still confused. So what has changed with Mr. Peregrine? Are you saying that you don't mind Eva taking younger lovers? Sorry, I guess I just never thought you were like that. I clearly overstepped my boundaries. This will not happen again. No, Gina, you're wrong here. You haven't crossed your boundaries and I will never let you here have a lover. What has changed now? Martin pushed him. Are you married? This is simply wrong. That's it. That's the difference. I'm married to a slut who can't seem to stop letting men into her bed. And FYI, I don't agree with Eve having a lover, and she knows it. That's why she kicked him out today and almost tried to kill me last weekend with sex. That's probably more than I need to know, but I think I see your point. Do you think she feels guilty? I know it is so. And she also feels vulnerable, Martin answered in an even voice. So what are you going to do? Until the end of the day? Nothing. I'm not going to do anything out of the ordinary. I'm going to stay in my office and come up with a plan to get out of a very uncomfortable marriage. How can you be so calm, Martin? Seriously, I had a boyfriend a year or so ago who did something similar, and while I won't pretend to know how you feel since you're married, I was devastated. I spent the entire weekend eating Starbucks ice cream and drinking vodka to drown out my sorrows. Gina, I knew Ava before we got married. I mean, I knew about her lifestyle. I can't pretend that I really know her. She convinced me that she had changed, but I still doubted. She told me it's all in the past, and she's ready to settle down with one man. She said, one person is me. I believed her. I decided to trust her. She's a chameleon. She can change her spots to suit her environment. Gina, Martin continued, I know that today you are risking your rights and privileges by telling me about this. For this, I will forever remain in your debt. I'm going to share something with you, but I need your complete assurance that you will never share what I'm about to tell you with anyone, not even Eve. Can you keep this between us? Well, of course. This goes without saying. Gina paled slightly, then looked away as if thinking, But I think I betrayed Eva's trust by telling you her secrets today, so I guess I understand why you ask. Gina... I may not be a good judge of Eve's character, but I know I can trust you. I installed cameras in our house while Ava was on a promotional tour. Shocked, Gina replied, Why? I suspected that Eva might be having an affair or thinking about it. All the signs were there. Then, when her tour ended and she sent me to China for a couple of weeks, I was almost sure. The cameras could provide evidence to confront her if she was having an affair. What's happened? My understanding is that Braxton was already in the picture by then. Didn't the cameras show what you think was happening? You probably already know everything I told you today. I would think so too, answered the gloomy Martin. But somehow Eve must have discovered the cameras and installed technology in the house to somehow turn off the equipment when she wanted to do as she pleased. So that thing she said to Braxton today about the cameras wasn't just a threat? She knew about the existence of the cameras, but deliberately blocked them from working? How cunning she is. Sorry, don't be offended. I had no idea. Do you think she actually wrote anything down? I mean, if you couldn't see her, that's one thing. But maybe she actually pointed the cameras elsewhere instead of just blocking them. You know you're gorgeous, Gina. I never thought about it. It's very subtle, but perhaps there is some truth in her words. I don't understand all the technology behind this, but I believe it is possible. I'll call my security company and ask them to take a closer look at these cameras. I was so angry that she knew about the cameras and installed technology to block them that I didn't even think about other possibilities. Thank you. Martin, I'm late, and I don't understand any of this. I need to go back. But I think you opened my eyes to something I didn't even know existed. I can't believe the depths she went to to deceive you. I'm not the most righteous person in the world, but I can't sit by and watch Eve take advantage of a perfectly decent person like you. You're just too good a person. I will save our conversation today until my grave. Gina stood up and quickly left. Martin stayed, drank another glass of iced tea, and paid. 
He was in no hurry to return to the office. He apparently lost Eve over her little toy, even if she broke up with him. She will always think she has the upper hand and can get away with it. She could take a break for a while to make sure he didn't suspect anything, but he was pretty sure she'd go right back to her old self. Here, as soon as everything falls into place. Defeating the cameras to hide her affair was proof of this fact. Returning to the office, Martin listened to the voicemail. Eve informed him that Braxton Peregrine was no longer working for Sachet Fragrances and he needed to prepare his exit package with the help of HR. No explanation. Martin would have to invent them. Which, given the circumstances, wouldn't be too difficult. There should be a block on the form to insert the reason for dismissal. I had sex with the boss's wife, he thought. At five, he called Braxton into his office. Braxton, it has come to my attention that you are falsifying company expense reports. I'm afraid we have a zero-tolerance policy for employee theft. From this moment on, your work is stopped. Please collect your personal belongings and leave the premises. You have 10 minutes. Security is posted outside to ensure you only take your personal items. You stupid cuckold. You only do what your wife tells you to do, Braxton said. I'm sorry? Martin responded without anger, simply questioning his last statement. You heard me loud and clear, you stupid cuckold. I seduced your wife and now you dismiss me to indulge your beautiful wife. You are right. I do what my wife told me to do. I'm firing you. She's my boss. Thank you for confirming that you had sex with Eve. I hope it was worth it. Martin answered again without emotion. You are worthless. You know it? I seduced your wife with incredible ease. What does this say about you as a man? Braxton was now firing all his guns. He felt very powerful, as if he still had Eve. It may be true, Braxton. But what I do know is that you are fired with extreme prejudice that comes with no references and a bias towards never being hired in your field for the rest of your career, due to the nature of the waste of expenses. It's not good for someone in the accounting department to be accused of a financial crime against a corporation. And that's all you have? Some trumped-up charge of expense fraud? Braxton fired back, but without heat. Well, yes. And you just admitted to having a sexual relationship with a senior member of the board of directors, who, by the way, is my wife. I think that's all I have. But I think that's enough, don't you? Don't you give a damn about your wife, idiot. So what you're saying is that you're not mad at my wife and I for our affair. You really are a cuckold. Braxton was starting to get impatient. No, I'm not angry at all. A relief indeed. It seems she was never truly mine. I was just filming it. If you need her, please call anytime. She's all yours. Besides, she had a lot of people like you. Frankly, you're just another notch on her bedpost. I'm sure she's already forgotten about you and is looking for her next conquest. Isn't that what she told you this morning? She may be beautiful, but the cost of maintaining her is too much for my budget. At this point, most of the wind was out of Braxton's sails. He decided that he could provoke Martin into a fist fight, which he knew he would win. What swimmer ever beat him in college as a wrestler? Nobody even tried. Braxton, one last piece of advice. You should get tested. Now get out of my office, Martin said with some anger, although he knew that Eva was most likely clear as glass. He had another surprise for Braxton. Braxton gathered his things and left the building quietly, but still seething with anger. When he was about 20 yards from his car, he fumbled in his pocket to get his car key to open the car. When he pressed the button, his car exploded in a huge fireball. The car lifted off the ground five feet before settling back down and burning in the intense heat. Even car tires were burning. If he had been a few feet closer, he would have been killed instantly. He had to admit that he may have seduced the wrong woman and angered a very powerful enemy in her husband. It was chilly between Eva and Martin over the weekend. She managed to push Braxton's misfortune with his car into the background. Martin was not himself. She tried to approach him on Saturday but was unsuccessful. Martin remained cold all Sunday. Eve knew something was wrong and she suspected she knew what it was. She decided not to stir the hive. Maybe if Marty gets rid of this, things will go back to normal. 
She believed that Braxton had kept his promise and told Martin everything about their affair. If Marty doesn't want to open up to her, she should assume he knows. Braxton wasn't going to run away in fear from Martin Terry. He knew that Eve would want him back in her bed very soon. All weekend he indulged in memories of Eve. He thought about her more than any other woman he had ever been with. He couldn't understand it. There was something about the unattainable that he was looking for. Yes, she was married, but that didn't matter to him. She wanted to be defeated. She wanted to submit to his will. He didn't care about his two-year-old Honda. Firefighters were happy to put the car out of its misery. Insurance will buy him a new car. Police conducted a cursory investigation but found nothing significant other than a few burnt wires that arched near the fuel pump as the likely source of the explosion. Martin planned. He wandered on. He always did this. He was going to cause maximum damage to Eve and her boy toy. He was going to take over the company, making Gina the new face of sachet fragrances. A simple mousetrap will be his salvation. A simple mousetrap will save his future, but it would also save his sanity. His carefully laid plans for expensive cameras were in vain. But now he knew that Eva would never remain faithful to their marriage if given time. Martin had time. At work, he worked himself into a frenzy. Week after week, he worked until he could barely work. Eve clung to him like a tick. However, he remained unmoved and only muttered the usual pleasantries to her. He showed her no affection or emotion. He began to weaken. Eva was so beautiful. It took every ounce of strength he could muster to treat her less than humanly for six long weeks, until she finally gave in to her own desires for love. Six weeks after Eve's silent verdict, she stumbled. She called Braxton. The conversation was short. Meet me at my house at six. Do not be late. I need to see you. She hung up after finishing speaking. Braxton smiled his wolfish smile. He had enough time to shower, shave, and get to Eve on time. When he arrived, all the lights in the house were turned off. He wondered for a moment if anyone was home. He walked to the front door and confidently rang the bell. Eve responded only a moment later, clicking her key fob to silence the cameras and quickly let him in, closing the door. Martin is at a conference in Jacksonville. He won't be back until tomorrow, but you'll leave as soon as I'm satisfied. Now get your ass to the bedroom and take off your clothes. No explanation, no flirting, nothing. Braxton knew what sex by invitation was. It was nothing more than that. He quickly undressed and went to bed, while Ava entered the room with two glasses of white wine. She handed one to Braxton and lay in bed, adjusting the pillows so she could talk. Rules. You won't stay the night. You will satisfy me and leave when I say, clear? Braxton took a sip of wine and nodded. Then finish your wine and get to work. You almost cost me my marriage. I'm serious. Braxton wasted no time. Eve felt as if a freight train had passed through her. Marty was every bit as good as Braxton in almost every area. For her, the illegal nature of the act itself was what gave her the high she sought from Braxton. She's had her fill. Braxton apparently had other plans. She was knowledgeable enough from their previous meetings to know what would happen next. That's enough. I've had enough for today. Take your clothes and get out of here. Braxton didn't like being used, although he did get some pleasure from it. Who said that you would command me? I said, now get out. I'll lock the doors when you leave. Braxton was seething inside. As he stepped onto the floor from Martin's side of the bed, he felt something push his leg. He lifted his toes slightly, thinking there was something under the bed. When he lowered his feet to the ground again, he felt something metal touch them. Just as he was about to move away, a clang shook both him and Eve. Severe pain shot through his right leg. He tried to remove his leg, but found that he could not move it. He screamed like an animal, the pain was so terrible. He urged Eve to turn on the light between gasps of pain. She turned on the nightlight. Oh my God, Braxton, what's wrong with you? I said, get the hell out of my house. She looked closely at Braxton's pained face and knew something was serious. Ava got out of bed and approached him. She turned on Martin's nightlight and took a closer look. 
She recoiled in shock as she saw what looked like a bear trap catch Braxton, nearly tearing him apart. It was chained to the bedpost. What's happening? What have you done to me? Shut up, Braxton. I did not do anything, but I think my husband did it. Oh, damn, this doesn't look good. Just stand still. Eve had no idea what to do. He begged Eve to call 911. Martin's phone again alerted him that the cameras were faulty, only this time he knew it wasn't. He also asked his security company to reprogram the cameras so they would broadcast on multiple frequencies, thus essentially bypassing the jammer Eve was using to hide her illicit affair. He called up a server in the cloud in real time to monitor what was happening. He heard the crystal clear sound of Eve dictating the rules and watched his own private film featuring his ex-wife. After the fun and games when Eve asked Braxton to leave, he stepped on a mouse trap. In this case, it really looked more like a bear trap, but Martin decided that it was better to be safe than sorry. A broken nail was hardly punishment enough for stealing his wife. He wondered if Eve would call 911 or let him bleed to death. Braxton attacked Eve. He was in so much pain that he swung wildly at her. He couldn't move more than a few inches with the chain, but he could tell he was losing blood. His strength was much less than just a few minutes ago. Maybe if he could sit up, he could try to get out of the trap. Eve, I need to go to the hospital. I'll die if I don't get this trap off me. Give me my phone so I can call 911. Please, I'm begging you. Like one person to another. We have to get help. Braxton begged Eve. Eve panicked. She had no idea what to do. If she called 911, they would of course answer. But an investigation would certainly follow. She found herself in the same trap as Braxton. She even thought about getting a gun and killing Braxton to put him out of his misery, and then turning the gun on herself. It was all so surreal. She walked over to her high-backed chair and sank heavily into it. Ava always considered herself a decent person. Although she might well call herself selfish, could she allow another person to die in front of her? She remembered how serious Martin had been when he proposed to her. He wanted to make sure she knew the consequences of infidelity. Trust, he said, was more important than almost any other attribute of human character. Without that, there is no relationship, were his words. Martin would never trust her again, no matter the circumstances. They would never have a relationship again, no matter the outcome. Braxton sat on the floor, trying to open the trap to free himself. Even with all his strength, he could only open the trap a quarter of an inch. He tried hopelessly, experiencing more pain each time the trap slammed shut. He grew weaker with every attempt to free himself. Eva was practically in a coma. She sat in a chair, staring into space. She knew Martin had set a trap. She knew her marriage was over. And now Martin has lured her lover into a life-threatening trap. He also trapped her. She will have to expose herself to save Braxton. The affair would cost her the trust of the Sachet Fragrances board. This could probably topple her reign. Martin continued to watch the video as the human drama unfolded. He knew his marriage was over. He may be in trouble with the authorities because of the bear trap under the bed, but Eve won't help her lover without calling them for help. Braxton looked like he desperately needed it. He had already turned terribly pale. Martin thought there was still time for Eve to do the right thing. He thought about calling her, but decided against it. Gina was already out of the shower. He heard the hairdryer working in the hotel. He was just about to turn off the channel when Eve went to her wardrobe and took out a gun. Martin knew she was keeping it for personal protection. She took him to the range for training several times a year to stay alert. She was a pretty good shot. She aimed at Braxton, pulled the trigger, but the bullet hit Martin's pillow. Maybe she really was trying to kill whatever she was aiming at, but it wasn't there. Martin was sitting on the edge of the bed. He watched in horror as Braxton continued to struggle. He doesn't appear to have been hurt. A few moments passed before Gina appeared in the bedroom in sheer lingerie and high heels, and Martin closed the lid of his iPad. My love, remember when I said you could run around sachet fragrances with your eyes closed? I know, but I thought you were just flattering me. I was sure you weren't serious, although you tried to convince me otherwise. 
Gina answered flirtatiously. Ah, but I really meant it. And now I believe that you will have a chance. It's just a matter of time. Can I make love to the next CEO of Sachet Fragrances? Only if you promise that you will never make love to your wife again. I don't like to share, she quickly answered. Don't worry, my love. I've been faithful to you since we first became intimate. Plus, I think it's going to be a little busy for the next 20 or 30 years. The police were called after Martin and Eva's neighbors heard a gunshot. They arrived in full tactical gear, fearing a home invasion. They all wondered why they weren't warned earlier since the cameras were registered with a direct link to the security company. If one of the doors were forced, the security company would be immediately notified and the police would be called. By the next morning, Eve had recovered from any physical symptoms. Her state of mind remained stricken. She couldn't speak. A bear trap was considered a deadly weapon. She was charged with possession of a deadly weapon, use of a weapon to inflict bodily injury and failure to render aid given the life-threatening injuries suffered by Braxton. They also accused her of illegal use of a firearm. She could not stand trial, and the judge sent her to a mental hospital for treatment, where she remained for the rest of her days. Braxton survived. He kept saying that Eve's husband had set the bear trap, but this tirade did not reach anyone's ears. Eva was married. He shouldn't have been in Eve's bed in the first place. Martin eventually convinced the board of directors that Gina should take over as spokeswoman and CEO of Sachet Fragrances. She was 10 years younger than Eva and had the right amount of brilliance. Gina was very familiar with how Eva ran the company. As her personal assistant, she also knew all the people in the industry that Eva interacted with. The board of directors accepted Eve's absence, not wanting their shares to fall. They also wanted to distance themselves from Eva to avoid scandal. Gina has proven that she is as beautiful as she is capable of running sachet fragrances. She followed their last scent with another offering. She always wanted to name the scent and called this one Secrecy. It also turned out to be very popular. She promoted it the same way Eve marketed her fragrance last year. There was one key difference. Martin, as her husband, accompanied her every mile of her journey. A simple mouse trap, commensurate with the size of the rodent. Really the simplest solution. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story because this story is nothing compared to the next one.